Hi. Now, in this part, then, we're told that Katie suggests using the random variable x, which has a normal distribution with a mean of 320 and a standard deviation of 150 to model the weekly income for these data. Um, we've got to find the probability that x lies between 240 and 400. And then in part f, with reference to your calculations in parts d and e, and the data in the table, comment on Katie's suggestion. Well, if this is uh, something you'd like to try now, I'll give you a moment to pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. So uh, let's see how we uh, go about this. Well, first of all, we've just got essentially a normal distribution calculation here. And in the usual way, what I'd do is just draw a sketch for something like this. We've got our axes here and uh, I'd mark on here my random variable x. Remember x is distributed normally with a mean then of 320 and standard deviation of 150. So that's the variance there, 150 squared. I'd mark my 320 for the mean there. We've got our normal distribution looking say something like this. Okay, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but the idea hopefully is there. Underneath this, I draw my standardized distribution, Z. Okay, because I just like mapping the values down onto this. So uh, we'll just sketch that in, something like that. Okay, again, meant to be symmetrical, so uh, not particularly good diagram, but there you go. Has a mean of zero. Now, we're looking for this probability between 240 and 400. So 240, let's say, is there, 240. Now, that is a width of 80 units, OK? And I can see that going from 320, another 80 units takes us up to 400. So we've got these two values, 240 and 400, equally spaced then about the 320 which is a point I'm going to use then when it comes to working out this probability, which is given as this area within these two, within 240 and 400. And the way I'm going to do it, there's many ways that you can do this, but the way I'm going to do it is say that, okay, I know that we've got this probability here back from 320 has to be 0 0.5 because I'm shading half the graph. And because these two sections here are exactly the same, all I need to do is work out what this probability is that I'm shading here in green between 320 and 400. Work that out and just double it. Now if I project my value for 400 back down onto the standardized graph, okay, I'm going to need to work out this value here, which I'm going to call uh, Z1, say, okay. Now in part C then, if I'm going to work out the probability that X lies between 240 and 400, then I'm going to do twice this green section here. And that green section is the same as working out the probability of Z. Okay, we're going to work out this Z1 value. It's going to be the observed value, which is 400, minus the mean, 320, divided by the standard deviation, which was 150. Now that probability there, okay, represents all the area back from this Z, from Z1. In fact, I better put that as Z1, okay. That gives us all of the area back from Z1 to the left of Z1. Then I'm going to need to subtract 0 0.5, okay, because that is going to be this blue area here, 0 0.5. That will give me now that channel in here, that green channel, but I'm doubling it, okay? So I hope you can follow my method there. 
So, this is going to be twice the probability of Z1 being less than, and if you work this value out, you'll find you get 0 0.5333 and so on, okay? And then from that, we subtract the 0 0.5. So the Z1 value here is in fact 0 0.5333, okay? All we need to do is look this value up in our tables and you'll find that you get 0 0.7019. And we now subtract 0 0.5. Work this out and you end up with 0 0.4. 038. Okay. Now for part F, we're asked that with reference to your calculations in part D and E and the data in the table, comment on Katie's suggestion that the random variable X has a normal distribution with a mean of 320. Now, if that's the case, okay, I would think that. Her suggestion sounds quite reasonable um, because in this part E, we've got we've worked out our probability with around the mean 320. Now remember, we've also seen in part D, we were told that we worked out that it was slightly positive skew. So I'd expect the mean to be a little higher. Remember, it was in an earlier calculation, 316, it's now 320, so it's slightly higher. I can expect it then to be fairly reasonable in this area here, but because of the positive skewness, it's not going to be a good fit necessarily overall. So, in summary, what we've got is this, that E suggests a reasonable fit for this range, but in part D, since skew, it will not be a good fit overall. Alright?